Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk to you about the potential role of serotonin in the pathogenesis of autism. In the year 2000, about 1 in 159 children were diagnosed with autism. Today, at least according to the CDC, 1 in 59 children will be diagnosed with autism at least by the age of 2 or 4. And according to a large body of research, the so-called causes of autism tend to vary greatly. Some researchers speculate and postulate that prenatal viral infections can contribute to autism. Others say it's heavy metals and other toxins that damage the brain in the womb, while fewer researchers are starting to look into and investigate the potential causative roles of elevated serotonin in not just autism, but a wide variety of different degenerative issues of the brain. Now, before I dive into the research on the correlations between serotonin and autism, keep in mind that I'm not saying that serotonin is the sole cause of autism. It's just a really interesting often overlooked causative factor in degenerative brain diseases and things like autism, again, that few people tend to talk about. And again, at least in my research and experience, there's no single cause for any degenerative disease. Every degenerative disease has a collection or variety of different causative agents. There may be one or two primary causes, but nevertheless, there's usually multiple things occurring, and all of these things should be taken into consideration when trying to treat anything. So hopefully this video if anything is just a little bit of insight and could help expand the picture as to what's going on with not just autism but again any issue degenerative issues of the brain so with that out of the way let's get into this particular research study that talks about the correlation between serotonin and autism basically the study has found that the development of social behavior is strongly influenced by the serotonin system. Serotonin, or the receptor known as 5-HT2CR, is particularly interesting in this context, considering that the modulation of the activity of this receptor can actually alter social interaction in adult rodents. Looking at another corresponding or correlating study on serotonin and autism, this one concluded that targeting that one specific serotonin receptor can reverse social deficits in a mouse model of autism. Furthermore, one of these particular studies found that if they use an antagonist to that 5 HT2C receptor, that serotonin receptor, that it reversed the neurological damage that is often caused by autism, vice versa. So you might be wondering, how is it exactly that serotonin can contribute to autism and neurological disorders? Isn't serotonin one of these helpful, feel-good neurotransmitters that we need in order to have a sense of well-being. While it is true that serotonin is a neurologically active chemical that affects different neurological processes like mood, memory, learning, and even things like anxiety, so different emotional aspects and aggression, the thing is, is that when serotonin is in excess, which is very easy for it to do because it is generally increased by inflammation. So serotonin tends to rise to sort of buffer inflammatory processes. And with inflammation being so widespread today due to the general toxicity of the environment, dietary stress, so poor inadequate nutrition or gut irritating foods that a lot of people tend to consume, amongst other stressors, it's very easy for serotonin to be chronically elevated. And in the fewest words as possible, as I talk about in these videos quite often, serotonin in this way is an inflammatory mediator in itself. It tends to trigger the secretion of other inflammatory mediators. For example, serotonin can trigger the production of cortisol. And when cortisol is chronically high, you can run into immunodeficiencies, oxidative stress, and ultimately you can run into inflammation because cortisol is gonna also tend to stimulate the production of other stress substances that can cause the immune system to become overactive and again, lead to inflammation. And again, in the fewest words as possible, Oxidative stress and inflammation tend to be the causative factors or the primary reasons that the brain and the body as a whole tend to break down. So to summarize, although autism is a rather complex degenerative disease, it seems the more degenerative a disease is, the more complex the causative factors are and the pathology is, meaning that there's usually more than one issue occurring and contributing to that degenerative issue. And in addition to the otherwise well-established causative roles of autism already, 
This research at least expands the picture, which I think is always a helpful thing. So what does this mean for you? Well, I wouldn't probably necessarily recommend supplementing with the anti-serotonin drugs or medications that they are typically using. I think there's really only one out of the handful that they use that has no negative side effects. However, looking at it from a more natural approach, there are a handful of different things that you can do that'll be more subtle, safer, and you wouldn't have to worry about, again, any potential negative side effects of medication or just going through that process of trying to get any medication that you could do to lower your serotonin levels as well as optimize the overall functioning of your body. So instead of looking just at the brain, taking a look at other systems in the body that affect the brain, which are primarily your gut, and your liver being a part of the gut. As I say so often here, your brain is directly affected by the functioning of your intestines as well as the functioning of the liver. For example, 95% or so of your serotonin is produced in the gut and it's overly produced in inflammatory gut issues. So if you have IBS, IBD, cancer of the intestines even, it's well established that serotonin levels are chronically high in those conditions. But on the short end, even just temporary acute digestive stress or inflammation can increase serotonin levels. So I would definitely recommend watching the other videos here on the channel for optimizing digestive function. Anything you can do to lower any sort of intestinal inflammation or any digestive issues whatsoever, be it chronic bloating, gas, constipation, etc., will have a positive systemic effect on the functioning of the brain and can specifically lower elevated serotonin levels, which would lead to inflammation that could ultimately damage the brain over the long term. The other thing I'd recommend is watching the videos we have here on how to improve the functioning of the liver. The liver is the primary detoxification organ. It is the master organ of the body. But when the liver starts to become burdened from toxicity, poison, whatever, then your brain takes on that burden. And that can definitely cause a very specific and direct negative effect on the brain. Not to mention it is usually the liver that plays the role in detoxifying, metabolizing, or destroying any excess stress substances. So for example, if the liver is impaired, it's going to build up with estrogens, with nitric oxide, and that can trigger the secretion or production of more serotonin. So taking care of the intestines and the liver are two very simple ways to reduce total systemic inflammation as well as lowering the excess production of serotonin. And in addition to these two more long-term goals, improving digestive function and liver health, you could on the short term supplement with ginkgo biloba, which is one of the unique herbs that actually has an anti-serotonin effect, which is probably one of the major reasons or mechanisms behind its powerful effects on the brain. Ginkgo biloba is traditionally known as one of the premier renowned brain tonics. And I think this has a lot to do with this ability to actually antagonize serotonin. Remember, the key thing to take away from Elisa's research, if anything, is that serotonin in excess is an inflammatory stress substance that can be damaging to your brain. So taking these proactive steps to lower serotonin in a natural and a pretty simple way could be very helpful for improving overall brain function. And at least according to this research, it may be preventative and therapeutic for treating autism. However, that's all I wanted to share with you in this video, guys. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for future videos just like this. And if you're interested, in learning more. I will be writing a blog post on this particular topic and linking up some of the studies. So definitely be sure to check out our blog in the near future for that post. And lastly, if you're interested in supplementing with some ginkgo biloba for its brain tonifying effects and anti-serotonin effects, you can find that on our online tonic herb shop in the description box below.